after three days of horrific selling, sometimes it's just nice to see companies report strong results and actually get rewarded on the spot for a higher stock price. Look at Cisco. By this time, I mean the CSY. Why Cisco? The food distributor that supplies restaurants, hospitals, schools, and, and hotels. Now, I've been a huge fan of this one as a reopening play that can pass on the cost of inflation to its customers by directly raising prices. Doesn't hurt that the stock's relatively cheap. Sure enough, when Cisco reported this morning, they crushed the sales and earnings expectations. Management also raised in their full year earnings forecast, just a textbook beat and raise, as Cisco is taking share and taking names. And that's why the stock jumped 6% today. It was just organic growth. I wouldn't be surprised if we got more room to run. Still not at its high. So let's take a look and check in with Kevin Hurricane. He's the president and CEO of Cisco. Very thankful, Mr. Hurricane. Welcome back to Mad Buddy. Jim, it's glad to be on your show again. Thanks for having us back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to ask you, Kevin, is that everyone tells me that all the big restaurants are closing, that there's real problems all over the country, that people aren't eating at the office anymore, they're eating at home. Your Cisco numbers tell me either you're just killing it, taking share from everybody, or that whole description's wrong. Which is it? I, the honest truth is I think it's a little bit of both, Jim. The market has proven to be pretty resilient from a food away from home perspective. As the Omicron variant exited stage left at the you know, kind of middle to end of February, the month of March was really robust from a food away from home perspective across the industry. But you know, make no mistake, Cisco is meaningfully taking market share. Our stated goal for this year was to grow 1.2 times the market, and we far exceeded that growth target, us versus the marketplace in the last quarter, Jim. Well, I mean, you, you got to tell people what your sales were. I mean, the sales growth here is incredible. And when you compare the sales growth even to the pan pre-pandemic, it's monstrous how well you're doing. Yeah, we had a strong beat from a top line to bottom line perspective, as you said in your intro. And our volumes, that's actually what we're measuring more than anything, because inflation is helping our sales. Our volume in our U.S. business was up versus 19 in the most recent quarter. And, Jim, what we're excited about is that is well ahead of what industry experts had predicted for our sector. And we still have growth tailwinds at our back. We have a international business, as you well know, and international right. hasn't yet caught up to the US. And we have sectors that we serve, like travel, hospitality, business, and industry, which is caterers to large corporate offices that are not yet fully recovered. So sales well above 19, volumes above 19, and we still have gas in the tank from a recovery right. perspective. Steve, gas tank, I want everyone who runs a business to listen to what Kevin's about to tell you. One of the most innovative things I have ever heard is this shift to a six-day delivery model. I don't know who came up with this, Kevin, but it is brilliant. Tell people how it works. Yeah, well, we like what we're doing here is we're expanding our work week for our physical operations while at the same time shortening the work week for our associates. One of the most important things that we need to do being a supply chain company is improve the quality of our jobs. So we're converting from a five-day scheduled work week for our associates to a scheduled four-day work week, four 10-hour days. Right. And if they need to work overtime or want to work overtime, it's easier because it's a fifth day instead of a sixth day, they have a better work-life balance. But for us as a company, by stretching to a full six-day, Monday through Saturday delivery, we're essentially able to increase our throughput capacity on each and every day of the week provide restaurant customers with better service. And Jim, we're able to grow our business profitably with fewer physical assets. We can sweat our trucks, sweat our buildings. We will invest in new buildings. We will invest in new trucks. We've increased our throughput capacity. We've increased our ability to ship on time and in full to our customers. And it's better for our associates as well. So oh, we're excited it, about it. it. We just completed that work this past quarter. You know, and as a customer, it's ideal. I mean, we always, you know, you can't have two days off. It's a six-day operation. Everybody knows that. Exactly. Now, um, one of the things I love, you know, when the Cisco trucks in parked, parked in front of our places, I mean, they, you know, look, they keep the engine running. That's fine. I don't blame them. They're trying to keep everything fresh. This deal you're doing with Carrier makes so much sense. An electric pilot, how big can it be? Yeah, we're excited about the work we're doing with our climate sustainability goal, Jim. We're the first and only food service distributor with a stated science-based target that's compliant with the SBTI initiative, and it has multiple factors. We will be electrifying our fleet and also electrifying the trailer, as you said. We're, we're shipping product on a tri-temperature truck. It's got a freezer section, a refrigerator section, and a dry. We ship millions of miles, and we can make a really meaningful impact in our communities in a positive way by electrifying our fleet. It's the right thing to do for our climate. It's also good for our business. We think it can create a competitive advantage our drivers love driving the electric trucks, and 
you'll see an announcement for us from us soon, actually, on a pretty significant commit we're, we're going to make in the electric truck business. Well, if, very you, soon. if you do, I know there's a comment. I know, I'm not familiar, but if you do it with Carrier, I have to like Mr. Gilbert. You know, I mean, look, you've, they've got some really great technology, and they're very proud of it. And we got to show it off because we don't want trucks idling. OK, but we do want trucks right in front because it has to be made easy enough to deliver the stuff to the restaurants. Now, one last thing. Yesterday, I was on the Tyson call. And while certainly food is not uh, soaring anymore, it did start kind of roll over a little bit. Uh, chicken rolled over a little bit, pork rolled over, beef rolled over a bit. Are you seeing any relief at all? Because this country needs it. Uh, yeah, we're seeing significant you know, inflation across the food ah. sector, as you well know, and uh, I've kind of gotten out of the business of predicting when inflation will begin to normalize because I've been wrong three times. We three times have said <laughs> okay. it's the next quarter where it's coming. Um, we're working very hard at Cisco to lower prices for our customers, Jim. That's what I could say. Being very aggressive on negotiating with suppliers, finding alternative sources of supply, introducing Cisco brand, as you know, to help save them money and helping with them with menu design. We can help restaurant customers understand alternatives to help them lower prices, portion size on the menu, uh, and just generally speaking, helping that restaurant be more profitable through advice and counsel that we can give them. Uh, we expect inflation will begin to normalize. As you said, we're about to roll over right. meaningful increases from a year ago. Well, look, I like the story. You know that. I've liked it since the day I met you because I thought it was a very underperforming company. And I remember you said, you just watch. And you did everything you said. So I want to congratulate you. That's Kevin Hurricane. He's the CEO of Cisco, SYY Kind. All of it. What can I say? I mean, there's always a bull market somewhere. I promise you I'll find it just for you right here on Mid Money.